Hello, Jim Dramatic here. Welcome to a brand new episode of Robot Wars Episode Reviews. It is the Tag Team Terror episode. Obviously, I did say Annihilator last time. I was wrong. I thought this came after him, but it didn't. So, okay. Tag Team Terror episode. Uh, you know, it's a crazy episode, and I've got uh, two guests with me. One is um, the ranty Anson9132. Hey, guys. And joining me for the first time, he'll be appearing appearing a lot more times in the, both Extreme One and uh, Series Five as well. But this is his debut on my show. It is Owen Ratcliffe. How the hell did I get here? I, last time I checked, I was asleep in my flat, and now all of a sudden I'm chained up in the bathroom. Uh, that that happened. Happen? That happens on my show. Unfortunately, I like to. Oh, you got you got my old spot. I'm in the attic these days. Yeah, I mean, I I, I stick um. Uh, I think it's Alex goes in my basement, which is really funny because I don't have a basement, so I don't know where he goes <laughs> half the time. So, James, please, I need food. You can get food after the review, honestly. You're whiny. Ugh. Please, I, I need mal- malnutrition. Okay, since it's your first time, I'll give you some. I'll, I'll let you off this time. Anderson doesn't get it. He's no excuse for Anderson. I'm sorry. Thank you, Master. <laughs> You're welcome. But uh, Tag Team Terror. Uh, it's fair to say that Anderson quite likes this episode. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'm me and Owen a bit more in agreement. It's a bit more average, a bit not the most. I mean, it's it's, it's not a bad episode by any means. It's just it's not the worst special. Yeah. The, yeah, the worst special is still to me is the celebrity special, honestly. But uh, out of out of uh, series four, at ones. least the ce- celebrity special was fun. It was kind of... I mean, this one's fun as well. It just doesn't, like... Despite all the craziness in this episode, there's not a lot uh, I can say that stands out as a big moment. Uh, I was going to say, at least the Slurry special was fun. The episode I got later in the Series 4 specials is less fun. Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> definitely true. But, I mean, we've got a weird set of robots combined here in teams. So I guess we'll briefly go... Obviously, not going to talk in detail about the robots themselves, because in the past we have gone over these robots quite a bit, but we'll go briefly through them. The first team, possibly the most random team, is Firestorm 2 and Scorpion. Oh boy, here we go. What is... Well, no, in all fairness, right, Scorpion was robot of the episode. I think we can all agree on that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I, lo- I love Scorpion, I love Firestorm, <laughs> but once again, Firestorm seems to get screwed over somehow by being, being put with a kind of... Weird, apo- weird partner, and Scorpion is yeah. just as useful as it always was. Yet this time I get past the first round because their opponents are even more incompetent. Well, <laughs> one, one, one of their particular opponents, anyway. But I just, I just love the fact that not only is my first episode the first robot I get introduced to is the current meme lord of Robot Wars. He's my meme but, lord. <laughs> but all, also the fact that Scorpion tried. But it did jack all like, it, this entire episode. It was Every the... time it tried to do an attack, it was just like, nope. I mean, right, right, right off the bat, it got flipped over. By me. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just spent the whole. T- I mean, by the end of the episode, it is so battered. I mean, you thought, you know, it's got burn marks, it's got an eye patch over it, it's just got things it's like, stuck oh boy, to it. Oh boy, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And it's gone. I mean, if Firestorm didn't even perform that well either in this. Heat overall. I mean, Firestorm had a terrible series four. It really yeah. did overall. And yeah, this... the one battle it really overperformed and it fucking lost. Yeah, that's what <laughs> upsets me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the annoying thing. Its best battle was its semi-final battle, and it lost it. But <laughs> you know, I mean, this team uh, is the most probably uh, the most random of the four. <laughs> yeah, I I want to know why. Like the only connection I can think of is they're both red. Yeah, that's all I can think of. I mean, uh, me- no, I know why because both teams wore a blue shirt. Yeah. Oh yeah. Joe, I would. Joe, I'd love to have seen. I'd love to have seen Firestorm and Panic Attack being on the team. That would have been pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. That would have been like yeah. yeah so- Firestorm and Grave Digger. That would have been pretty decent. Oh Two yeah. Fire- Fire- Firestorm and Grave Digger. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. What about Firestorm and Deator? Hey, I'd, I'd watch. Yeah, exactly. That'd be that'd be another fun. I mean, Deator talk at least hold its own. So yeah. you know that would be actually quite a decent. You know, obviously later and, on, Deator talk gives on... Deator a chance in series four. <laughs> yeah, the best and they had was celebrity. Oh. They didn't have a good series four either, did they? The best they had was a celebrity special. Yeah, that was their best moment. But I mean, later on, obviously Deator becomes champion with Pussycat, which is odd. So it does show you they can actually have a they can hold their own in the tag team if they need to. But yeah. you know, it's a bit of a shame really they didn't choose a better partner for them. But <laughs> I mean, one was definitely overperforming over the other. Let's say that. Uh, I, I may I may go a bit off topic here, but 
I want to know why on earth Millie Ann Bug and Agent Orange didn't team up in this. Because Agent Orange tried to qualify. They could have easily come back because the robot was still there. Millie Ann Bug had already competed. And they were going to compete as a team yeah, in were... Series 3, weren't they? Yeah, they were. I mean, they were, they were yes. They, they had to due to pan more pandemonium being a whore. Damn it, yeah. more pandemonium. <laughs> you cancelled so many events. God damn you and your shanking ways. <laughs> yeah, even... <laughs> Oh, damn it. But yeah, this the, out of the four teams, this one is the most random in terms of robots put together. I mean, not, it's not the most random reason, which we'll get to obviously in a second with other teams, but yeah, there's a, there's, there's a worse reason to put these two apart from just Scorpion needs to do something apart from get killed in its own heat. Um, yeah. Then we got a lot of airtime in the series. <laughs> yeah, for some reason they kept trying to push it, like, this is the robot you have to look... You have This is the robot to watch. And well, maybe, it's the only robot I know of that didn't actually have to qualify to get into the series. <laughs> yeah, just let it in. That, was, that wasn't yeah. seeded, yeah. Yeah, because... They, they just let it in because it looked good. And at first, I don't blame him. Scorpion is the most funny-looking robot ever, so I can't complain. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, I still can't believe this thing in the future banned, made spinners banned in, certain are in mo most arenas, because, my God, this thing, is, from its start, it's just a weird, weird don't ending. Fuck, don't fuck with the Scorpion. Especially well, that the face. the first Thor compared to what it went on to become. That's true, but Scorpion... Because yeah. uh, these, at least the first, four, the first Thor was at least um, okay. This thing, going from this to one of the best... To a, a you know, breakable spin... You know, the spin that breaks the the arena or something else. It's just... I mean, I mean, want to talk about epic transformations in Robot Wars. Just look at, from Chronic the Wedgehog, the first Series 4 version, to Apollo. Oh yeah, that's surprise. That's a, that's one of the biggest leaps ever. Yeah. Oh, no, no, a, re a really good leap, right? Berserk two to Twister. Oh god, <laughs> best, best, best. I'm oh, sorry, that's a leap backwards. Sorry, best transformation <laughs> ever. Just, uh, that's a, that, the, that uh, was a leap. Just, back, that... Sorry, go on. You just get a picture of James with the words triggered underneath it every time. You <laughs> <mention Twister. laughs> That that was a leap backwards off a cliff. That was that, that was how bad that one was. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, then the second team we have Bigger Brother and Plunderbird Four. Not the worst. Great team. Yeah, great team. I mean, two great I, teams in general. I love this team. <laughs> I, you could tell. You could tell that Joe Watts was having a blast being with the Plunderbird guys. Yeah. And who doesn't? Let's face it. Who wouldn't have uh, a good time? And the Plunderbird guys, they were just entertaining with Joe Watts all I mean, over the place. It's kind of sad that I think in this battle, in the battles they, were, they appeared in, Plunder Four arguably did more, less than Scorpion, which is quite <laughs> funny. But at the same time, that's the thing about Plunder Four: the robots might not be the. I mean, especially from Series Three onwards, the robots. I mean, Series Five was pretty, was very good, but especially Series Three and Four weren't the greatest robots ever. But the team yeah. made up for it so much. I mean, the Series Four version has crushed it. I don't think it ever really crushed anything. I, I don't. I don't get why Mr. Psycho hates this team. They are just a oh, blast. No, no, no. Mr. Psycho likes me. He's, he's, no, no, he doesn't. He's just. He does it as like a kind of jokey, sarcastic thing. He does like him. He, he, yeah, I know. But, but. <laughs> I mean, being paired with someone like Bigger Brother, it's quite a quite an overachieving <laughs> in comparison. I mean, obviously, I, I love that one bit in the, when they're having the interviews where Joe Watts just goes straight into the camera, like face and <laughs> face right in the camera. Because that's what you how, did not, how did more people not do that? I mean, if you're, I mean, if you're a little kid, you're going to mess about, you know, if you if you if you if you can, you can mess about with the camera or something. If you if you take the opportunity to, and it's really yeah. one, it's one of the few times he really kind of did that, but or any kids really kind of mess with the cameraman or whatever. But that was pretty funny, and I definitely say this this team was the most entertaining one of the two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but can we, can we just talk about the fact that in the playoff, um, uh, Plunderbird never moved. Okay, no. Bigger Brother took on team by itself and won. End of the match, Plunderbirds celebrate like they did all the work. <laughs> like, we didn't move. Yeah! That, that, is the sh <laughs> that is the showmanship about the Plunderbird team. So <laughs> they'll do nothing and still celebrate it. <laughs> uh, we won, maybe. Well, I, did, I did nothing and celebrate it, so... True. <laughs> yeah, you you just you just ran, rant a lot. That's and you. <laughs> uh, then the third team with the weakest reason to ever join together, Invertebrate right. and Exterminator Two. Why are you two together? Because we went to Hereford once. Uh, what what is it with Exterminator and picking weird teammates? Like, I don't know. They yeah, they, they had Invertebrate because they ran into each other in Hereford. 
and oh, I'm sorry, Hertford, as it's called in <laughs> Hertford, <Yeah>. Hertford. <laughs> yeah, Hertford. Uh, and in Extreme Two, they team with Mega Morg, or was it Mini Morg? Mini Morg. I think it was Mini Morg. Because I think. they were the last robots left on the benches. Yeah, wow. I mean, they really know how to well, pick they, the teams. They kept, make, they kept making different excuses, didn't they? Like they said, "Why did you um, why why did you why did you guys meet?" And they said they met on the M5 or something like that. And then, they, <laughs> and, then and then why? Because they can drink as much as we can. And then they said because we were the last ones hiding under the table together. <laughs> I mean, I mean how, how on earth do you meet on the M5? Do you break down in the same spot? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if I had to pick a teammate to go with Exterminator 2, it would easily have been Behemoth, honestly. Oh, yeah. Have the, Pr- 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 the Pritchards, the Team Pritchard. Just just get, you know, yeah, just have the you know, Team Pritchard sorted out. That'd be great. That would and... be oh, Shunt with a run. Yeah. <laughs> but instead, Invertebrat. Man, Invertebrat had a terrible Series 4 as well. I mean, it was sort of okay in Series 3. At least it got to the Heat Final comfortably. But in yeah. Series 4, it just nothing went right for Inverbrat at all. And this uh, one... I, I felt so bad for them in the Heat, though. Yeah, I mean, that getting stuck on their own flipper, that's just unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> so... the creature. Oh, God. There's, <laughs> yeah. nothing, there's nothing worse, is there? There's nothing worse. And it led to Losing by... to a robot that came from the same team with a robot that broke down because it got tapped by Trident. Yeah. <laughs> made out of paper, like, basically, essentially looked like it was made out of paper mache as well. But, yeah. I mean, it probably was. I mean, this, this team were pretty decent, but again, it was more of a case of extermin- being exterminated being pretty much 99% of the work in this entire he yeah. also they also got to show off their different acts for the first time, the only time. The, little, the one that was very reminiscent of the Series 3 acts, which I'm surprised they didn't use over their really pathetic tinfoil axe used in most of their heat in, in the yeah, in the main series. Do anything either. He couldn't even puncture King B3's perspex. <laughs> I know he couldn't, but it's the fact they like, didn't decide to use it at any point was kind of weird. Yeah, how many times did they bash King B in the exact same spot and the axe never went through? Nothing. I think multiple, probably at least ten times or something like that, and nothing happens of it. I mean, John's axe on Plunderbird One was better. I'm surprised this didn't <laughs> use the flipper right off the bat. Honestly, it made... John's axe on Mortis was better. Yeah, Mortis. Well, maybe not, but. They're causing damage! That dink. Dink. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh God, by far overall the weakest team on the team. I mean, Exterminator means... I mean, Firestorm at least was a you know, former grand finalist. This, I mean, Exterminator 2 is good, but when paired with something like Invertebrate, which didn't really do anything, even less than Scorpion again, yeah. it's kind of worrying. Um, and then finally, the best... One of the most famous teams in the tag team ever. Obviously, this is the third time they've ever appeared together in the same arena. It is King B3 and 101. This time as partners. The, the, the score is one all at the moment. You know, 101 lost in Series 2, then won in Series 3. Well, as uh, uh, RoboDoc and then obviously. And now they're teamed together. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> did you did you notice this team won and it was the only team where both robots actually did equal amounts of work? Yeah, they did, well, that's probably yes. the best. Probably why they won because actually, because both robots were actually competent. Yeah, know? it's like Exterminator and Vertebrate. Exterminator does all the work. Bigger Brother and Plunderbird. Plunderbird dies. Scorpion and Firestorm. Scorpion does stuff, and Firestorm just helps. And one one and King B three, they both actually did work and actually both worked to the very end, which is yeah. very rare for a King B fight because when the King B something goes wrong with it at some point, and yeah. <laughs> a bit, a bit Re- of a yeah, you know, a bit of a um, foreshadowing for a later tag team tear with Re- them. Too. Rewatch, rewatching King B's matches in this, I I kept thinking it was out of control, like it wasn't series uh, extreme one. Because it kept spinning around on the spots at some points, but no, they kept going. Yeah, it's actually the, like, one of the few times that King B was actually reliable in the entire series. And again, yeah, I love Simon Harrison, but oh, he's, he's had very bad luck when it comes to reliability with his robots. And one of one times that thing's broken down in its own accord is scary as itself. Mostly because it burns out <laughs> in the earlier series, particularly in later series, it just dies or goes out of control <laughs> or so- something happens to it. But I I don't I don't get why Razor gets so much flack for being the unreliable robot of robot wars when King B has broken down so many more times. Hey, I just 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 look at something like Spawn again. Jesus, that oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ! I and mean, that's a that's a that's a twice semi finalist, and that thing's broken down pretty much almost every appearance it appears, in, especially in Series Six, which is worst. Oh, don't get me started on Spawn again. I might get hashtag triggered. Yeah, I can understand. This is not. Not a good one, but yeah. Well, series six, born again, was the best robot of the series, wasn't it? Oh, clearly, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was better, yeah, best robot ever. Anderson, leave. <laughs> <laughs> but 
uh, this is definitely obviously over. There's no there's there's a reason why this team won because they were the only good team that well, where both team members actually consistently worked and did did something in the battle as opposed to one team doing all the dam doing damage and aggression and the other one just kind of hanging out in the background or breaking down. Yeah, two reliable invertible robots of similar builds with similar tactics and similar ways to fighting. Of course they were going to win. Exactly. It was kind of I mean normally King B 3 and 101 aren't overpowered robots, but in this compared to their opponents or at least their opponents teams then yeah, it was kind of a obvious. Obv- I mean, unless something really badly went wrong with King B or One or One or something, then it wouldn't. Well, have, even even then, Big Brother did proves that your opponent can die and you still win. Oh yeah, Extreme unfortunately didn't work out for them. Oh yeah. But um, enough of that. Let's get to the quote-unquote battles because I call these more free-for-alls every time. Um, <laughs> round one. They're obviously. still battles. Yes, but, <laughs> I mean, round one, we have Firestorm 2 and Scorpion versus Bigger Brother and Plunderbird 4, and Scorpion gets his ass kicked almost instantly. Yeah. <laughs> just flipped over. <laughs> and this is Series 4, big, big, Bigger Brother, which isn't even the most powerful one yet, and that's still just don't flip. Yeah, I, I, I got it. Can I quickly ask this? What was Bigger Brother's flipper? Like... Series 5 was so much better, because at least the flipper actually went all the way back. Yeah, actually, it was very unfortunate, because later on in the in the other battle, the bigger brother managed to self-right itself, so they were very unlucky in Series 4 when their thing bro- their CO2 broke. But, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Plunderbird 4, did, did, did Plunderbird 4 do anything in this battle, apart from just drive around and occasionally bump into other robots? It, it, it moved for a bit, and then... It managed to catch a Scorpion in its jaw. Oh wow! <laughs> That's only because another robot pushed Scorpion off. I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I love that Scorpion kept getting self right and flipped over constantly because it just because it was, it was essentially. Plunderbird did the handstand. It got flicked by Firestorm. Did the handstand. That was pretty cool. <laughs> that was that was a, that was a great. Also, Matilda completely, you know, f- saying "fuck you" to Firestorm and just bashing it into the wall and flipping it over, but it was able to self right and. Uh, Matilda didn't flip it over. We flipped onto it. Bigger brother did, didn't it? Oh no, it was Matilda. Sorry, yeah, Matilda. Yeah, yeah, yeah Matilda. It was yeah because it was Firestorm got gone to Big Brother at one point, but they didn't flip them over. They just got like a little flick on them. And yeah. honestly, from because bef- once again, the flipper doesn't go all the way up. Honestly, from this, bef- I mean, it was pretty much down to the fact that I mean, did, I think didn't um, Plunderbird Four break down at the end of this fight or something? Yeah, it broke down about halfway through it. In all fairness, it broke <laughs> down in the first five seconds. Yeah, it was that probably was the reason why Firestorm won it because. Scorpion it was. Moved, t- for, it moved for a bit, and then one of the tracks died, and then it was like, ah, oh, fuck it. I mean, to credit to Scorpion, as much as they got beaten up, it was still moving at the end of the battle, <laughs> even if it wasn't yeah. really, really working well, so properly. Until it slipped on its side and then set on fire by side and bash. That was fun. That was. <laughs> I mean, that's the definition watching, of. A, watching, I say that's the definition of a robot Scorp- having a good opponent, really. Just. Yeah. <laughs> what watching Scorpion in this match reminded me of that Family Guy skit where um, Mike Tyson's fighting an old granny. But the old granny keeps getting up, and then Mike Tyson's just like, I'm pooped, and then he faints, and the old granny wins. <laughs> That's basically what happened with Scorpion. <laughs> he just wouldn't stay down. It's like, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna bang. I'm gonna get you. Yeah. Bang. I mean. Is that all you got? It was just. <laughs> it was all just down to the fact that Plunderbird 4. As usual, sucked. So I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure by the end of that match, some of Scorpion's painted on teeth were missing. Oh, I think bits of Scorpion is missing by the end of it. It's just it's some, <laughs> the whole robot's not even looking. Right. I mean, look at look at it in the second in the heat in the final for this. It just looks really beaten up. Yeah, Ugh. but I guess I'm just guessing by default, <laughs> Firestorm Two and Scorpion won that one because Plunderbird was doing so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's hard to believe that that was the first match where Firestorm and Bigger Brother fought each other. Yeah. Compared to their matches later. Yeah. <laughs> it was still a pretty good battle between the two robots. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. Mo- it was mostly just a Bigger Brother versus Firestorm fight with Scorpion occasionally chipping pretty- in. Well, the same was... was the playoff. That was pretty much Bigger Brother versus Exterminator. That's yeah. true. That's it, true. It, was, was very it was half Bigger Brother and Firestorm putting on quite fairly a really good match and half Sergeant Bash roasting Scorpion and then Scorpion just like wait I gotta fight bang yeah <laughs> um, but yeah so then that battle Firestorm 2 and Scorpion won Bigger Brother and Plunder before go to the playoff um, and in the second battle Invertebrate Exterminator 2 versus King B3 and 101 again this is Exterminator trying to use its axe not really doing anything to get against King B at all just don't. Exterminator's causing damage! 
Dunk. Uh, Invertebrate tried to help, but... <laughs> also, tried. also, is it me or the, the spinner on Invertebrate was moving really slowly compared to how it, it did in the heat? Compared to the heat. Because in the heat it was actually spinning okay, but here it was just like 10, re- 10 revs per minute, it felt I, like. I think they had radio signal problems or something, because it just... Be- I mean, it, it was also... Much, I mean, if you notice, it just in general, it was much slower. Yeah, in the yeah. actual in the heat, it, it it charged in, it got straight in there, and then fucked itself over. But you know, meanwhile, in in this, it barely moved. It was it was crawling along. Its blade was barely spinning. I don't even think its flipper lifted once. I think it had control problems or something, or our receiver problems, maybe something like that. There must have been something wrong with it. I mean, it de- it definitely felt like the weaker link, and that's ultimately the reason why they lost. Because while exterminator was still moving, and the other, but the other two still had their you know, had their teammates working, so that's probably why they won by default, really. I mean, this fight probably wasn't... Probably well, in all the... fairness, it wasn't a default. They actually owned them. Come oh, they, 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 owned yeah. them they, owned, they owned them, yeah, but even if they'd been, like, equal damage, honestly, the fact that Invertebrate broke down would been, was a massive problem in itself. And, I mean... I, I just I just love the visual of this match. Like, Exterminate is this big, blocky, beefy monster of a robot, and you got 101 and King B, both fairly small, just beating the shit out of it. It was like a man, it was like a fully grown man being beaten up by a bunch of school kids. <laughs> I mean, I would say this fight was probably the least interesting of the four, because less, less crazy shit happened compared to... Yeah. I mean, obviously there wasn't, imagine the robots weren't too crazy in this one, so I guess there wasn't really like any kind of obviously funny things that could happen, but, I mean, apart from Invertebrate, all three robots were rel- relatively competent, so... It was more yeah. just a case of just invertebrate dying and the other two being a lot more aggressive and just better overall. And I love that by, you know, the first round, who cares about the rules? Like, n- no one cares at this point. I mean, they, they tried to follow it a little bit more in this battle, but they really gave up again. Like, as soon as one teammate gets in problems, they just in, the other teammate just flies in, like, every time it happens. There's, like, yeah. no regard for any rules whatsoever. And I, was, I think that's what I like about Tap Team Terrors in a way, is that they say there's, a rule, there's rules and there's a format, but does really anyone nope. care? <laughs> no, no one cares. <laughs> but it's yeah, it. it's good. But in the end, obviously King B three and one one won that one. Uh, in the playoff, we have obviously Inverted Brown Exterminator two versus Bigger Brother, and I'd say Plunderbird four, but they were really in the battle because they broke down within <laughs> yeah. two seconds. This this was my favorite match of the night, to be honest. <laughs> this this was one of the best battles, definitely. It's uh, just just because Bigger Brother versus Exterminator. I mean, I actually wish we saw this in the semi finals. Yeah, yeah. Our actual series. It was just such a great battle. They both got good attacks on each other. They both were took took advantage of each other. They both came back strong against each other's attacks, and then Exterminator drove down the pit a little bit. But apart from that, it was a really really good battle. Yeah. Plus, actually, some um, uh, bigger brother managed to self right, which it never, which unfortunately it failed to do in its heat because of its uh, CO two breaking. So we got to see that happen again. And yeah. um, obviously, Exterminator using that flipper like it should have done in the first round again. It really was best. They got they got the first attack in. They yeah, did. they really were That's actually they were, they were really going in strong. Really, I mean, again, Vertebrat and um, Plunder before were more just bystanders in this heat. Really, I mean, <laughs> I mean, Vertebrat completely got bodied by Bigger Brother, <laughs> just like slammed into the corner and just broke after that. And then and all the house robots just started attacking it from there on. And they just kind of forgot that Invertebrat existed while those two started fighting again. I, I this is the uh, funniest moment of the night of this episode for me was in this match. Um, just after the match started, Invertimac was coming out of his corner to, um, you know, double team on Bigger Brother with Exterminator, and Dead Mel just came across the arena, did a U-turn, and then went after Invertimac, and Invertimac just backed up like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how right for me, though, is still Exterminator driving into the pit, because just no reason why yeah, it did. Uh, just... <laughs> yeah, there was no reason at all. It, was just, it wasn't even under pressure. It was clearly open. It had been open for about five friggin' seconds, at least. I mean, ah. Uh... Why didn't the siren go off in that match, though? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. That was weird. I mean, that's kind of a... the thing. Is that the thing is the sirens put in post? Ah, yeah. If you watch, if you watch the um actual like if, you know, I don't know, you guys own the um the Robot Wars Warriors DVDs, basically. Yeah, I got where, you know, where they, they, they yeah, I showed yeah, when you see the unedited Hypnosis versus Splinter fight, the pit lowers, but there's no siren for it. That's put in post. Ah, so I'm surprised they must have just forgotten to put it in. So then. it's. Yeah, it's basically an editing glitch. Yeah, basically they fucked up. Oh, they well. fucked up good. <laughs> but because of because of suicide, <laughs> bigger brother. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to even clue pun before. Bigger brother won it <laughs> because of the way of John <laughs> Reed. 
Yeah, yeah. Although not as embarrassingly as John Reed, where the pit was always open from the beginning. You just went half and half across the arena to go into it. I mean, it was relatively close to it, but it was still very embarrassing. Yeah, Bigger Brother won it, and Plunder of Four took all the credit. So yeah, that so they come <laughs> they came third fairness, overall. Fantastic effort from Bigger Brother. Very, very. Like, it was a great show from I them. Think, it was still up against sure. two Bigger robots. Was, I think Bigger Brother was robot of the episode, really. It really yeah. was. In all fairness, I felt I felt that it dominated its first battle as well and was very unlucky to lose. And it dominated well, it mostly dominated this battle. You know, I think personally had Bigger Brother had Plunderbird four not broken down in the first round, they would have beaten Fast Thomas Gobby. I think they would have both given um especially Bigger Brother would have given one one and King B a really good fight. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Just just a shame they would have just given a really kind of well, while well, an entertaining partner, a very, very useless partner in battle. If they'd been given anyone slightly a bit, I mean, I'll say, I'm so glad they were given Plunderbird, but at the same time, like, if they're talking about wanting to win this battle, then I'm trying to think anyone, at any point, a lot of robots would be a lot better than them. Like, and uh, then, Banshee, for example. Banshee! And, <laughs> and then in their next appearance as a team, they got, Plunderbird got disqualified. <laughs> because it literally head-butted the entry gate. <laughs> I just, that, that was pretty, just because Mike Onzo and Brian Kilburn so what happened with the door then? Well, I thought I wanted to go in first, mate. Well, maybe you should let him open it next time, eh, Gov? Well, there is that, I suppose, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love those two. They're great. Do they, do they still have the Thunderbird robots, by chance? Uh, Mike Onslu has um, the shells for all the robots, bar Thunderbird 5, because it well, got wrecked. Yeah. Oh, I wonder why. <laughs> hmm. I, don't think he, I don't think it has... I don't think he has the um, the innards, but I know he definitely has the shells of Thunderbird 4, uh, three Thunderstorm, sorry, and then obviously two and one. I believe he has as well. Oh wow! And I know that apparently he picks up to put some on static display at some live events. Oh, Ooh. that's awesome, man! Cool, that's brilliant. Um, but yeah, because of this battle, I've actually, I've actually touched Thunderbird four shell actually. Wow! Uh, Get you. Fame to fame there. <laughs> Met my nice. Lobo and him are like just mates now. Sort of. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> But uh, yeah, because of this battle, Bigger Brother and Plunderbird Four come third in Invertebrate and Exterminator Two, dead last. Well yeah. done. But of course, I the final was a bit of a whitewash. <laughs> I one mean, of the very few times Firestorm broke down. True, actually. Yeah, Firestorm is one of those robots that, a bit like Wild Thing, rarely likes to mm. break down. And unfortunately, it had to be in a. Of course, it had to be in a random side event. They break down. At least it wasn't the main competition for the most part. But at least, I mean, one of the that would have made their series four even worse. Also, uh, a little bit I liked is one of the few times that King B saw actually did damage. It did. Oh, yeah. It did some nice. It, some bits of loads of scorpions went flying. Bits of scorpion flying off it when they rammed into it. But again, it's only another thing of note. Scorpion's chainsaw did damage. Actually, it did very, very much yeah, it, it did something. <laughs> actually, it's it kind did of, a thing. It's kind of weird actually because Scorpion, in its appearances, both appearances in, in the Ro- in Road Wars, have actually um, it actually has caused damage at some point. The chainsaw's done damage to the King B, and it did some damage to Reactor's wheels with the saw at the back. Yeah. So, it, so it actually has done more damage than something like Banshee, for example. So I'll give it credit, but I, I, <laughs> I do, I do like Scorpion because it's one of those joke robots that actually gave it a go. Yeah, it's a fun joke robot, and is it wasn't a joke robot because they actually felt it was super. I mean, did you not do again? We're knowing this episode well. They turned around and said, "You're lucky that you got Firestorm to help you, right?" And you're, you're right. We've got a good robot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but we I, haven't I, got ourselves right. <laughs> I, I thought they were having a laugh. Then I didn't think they were being serious. No, I, I didn't think they were being no, serious. I'm, I'm almost certain they were being serious. No, I don't they're being serious. He, literally, he said it with a straight face. Yeah, he could be. We, been, got, we been got a joking. good robot. It's just a shame we're four series late. Yeah. <laughs> before, before the series even started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, this battle was really... Not much happened in the battle in terms of, like, craziness. I mean, Scorpion just got owned. Oh, Firestorm actually broke down for the first time. And, yeah, we actually got King B to survive two battles in a row without breaking down or going crazy or control problems or something. Or burning and, out. And something for you, James. In this match, I know how much you like pictures of robots look, looking pathetic, i.e. evil weevil. <laughs> you got Firestorm and Scorpion, both broken down in the exact same spot, and the camera just Cuddling pans over them. Yeah, I'm looking at that image now, it's it's a sad one. <laughs> just like, make it stop! I mean, no... I want to say this about this battle. It's anticlimactic as an actual battle, especially considering it's a final, but as a spectacle, it's 
fucking amazing. I mean, you got yeah. it's just it's just crazy. Jonathan Pierce frantically shouting things to the point where he stumbles over his own words. Uh, Firestorm dying for no reason. Scorpion looking limper than ever. King being one on one attacking each other in the house. I saying, "Fuck it, we'll attack you instead." Just silliness, and I love it. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that, that's the perfect description, Anderson. <laughs> Actually, I do love this little um, little bit of a fun fact that made me laugh because um, uh, this I think Simon Harrison said this on a uh, Sam Elliott's uh, Robocast with his interviews with different teams. He obviously talked about Simon Harrison for uh, King B and all that. And apparently, because only one trophy was made for the winners, even though there's two teams per t- you know per entrant, whatever. And yeah. so Simon Harrison the Missy, he took the uh, trophy for himself, and a second trophy was made for 101. Although he claims it to be smaller and inferior. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on the wiki. <laughs> I love, I love that. Cause, <laughs> yeah, our, our trophy's better. <laughs> they, they, they should, they should have carried that over to Extreme One when they added that vengeance yeah, match. Like, yeah, one <laughs> wins and gets the trophy. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're boasting like WWE stars, saying, our trophy's bigger than yours, our trophy's better than yours. I'd love to see Simon Harrison just play that up. <laughs> that yeah. so funny. And yeah, I love just Simon. Just parading it around then, the pits like a true champion. That would, that would even be better if, if Mike then turned around and said, at least I'm not contemplating for anything. That that just would have been the icing on the cake, I feel, there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd been great. But um, yeah, so King being 101 are the triumphant winners. Yay! Mm. The only robots that actually both worked properly. What a surprise! That the, o- the only consistent team. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so yeah, that one, wa- one. One thing we forgot to mention about this episode: Did you see how empty the pits were? Yeah, it was done. Very, it must be done really, really late in the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, they were all late. huddled in the corner, and you could see in the background like there were people cleaning up and tables empty and all that. Yeah. Well, yeah, they had. I think they had to do it later because obviously, if you notice, they had to paint the floor blue and red on one side, on yeah. each side. So I think they probably did it at the end to so get that out of the way. So yeah, because it'd be hard to continuously paint it every friggin' five minutes, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of ironic, really, that one of the first specials, um, Christmas specials of the series, was done last. Yet the War of Independence was filmed relatively one of the first things filmed, and yet it was the last one to be aired. Out yeah, of the specials. I think, I think though, I think that only two battles were though, because if you look at again, if you watch later on in the episode of the War of Independence, again the pits are practically empty. There's, hmm. there's nobody in the background. There's just it just either or it's like you said, it's so early that no one else has turned up. It, it might it, it might be early on because maybe like they said in advance, oh these teams are all be you know since American teams can be here for a certain amount of time, whoever's in the War of Independence come in earlier or something like that. So that might have been the case, maybe you don't know yet, but. It was definitely, yeah. definitely at least some of the battles were definitely filmed right at the beginning. Cause, I mean, the pit wasn't painted, you know, the, yeah. some of the arena wasn't I don't proper. Even think the floor paper was there. No, the floor paper wasn't really the working. Floor. The lighting was obviously slightly off at times because they hadn't really fixed it, you know, got it all to speed yet. The kid a lot so that it's really small claw. Yeah, they hadn't yeah. fixed the claw yet. So, yeah, you could tell there's definitely, especially the, the most obvious one was obviously the Ghetto Bot and, um, and the Ramstein battles. Those two were definitely the ones that the oldest arenas. Yeah. The, the oldest oh, versions. I- I love little backstage trivia like that. I do, but yeah, this was the tag team terror. Obviously, uh, overall, I mean, again, it's a it's a case of it's relatively fun, but at no point can I call it like a really great heat for me. It's more just relatively average. So I'd probably give it like a six out of ten, honestly. Where it's like it's good, but it's not something I'd go and rewatch loads of times unless I just felt like watching it because I hadn't watched it in a while. Or for the or in my case now because I had to review you know, have to review on it so I have to watch it. But yeah. I don't know. Well, what what do you think, uh, Owen? My personal rating, I give it two and a half tag team titles out of five. <laughs> like it it was fun but left no impact whatsoever. Fair enough. Uh and I can guess what Anthony's gonna say. <laughs> two out of ten. No um well, obviously, I'm I'm actually smart, like unlike you two. So, okay. oh I'm wow, give it... <laughs> I'm offended. I'm joking. I'm joking. I, no, I'm offensive. He's not joking. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. I can't count past tomato. <laughs> it's, better, it's, better, it's better than potato. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can get the cauliflower and gone. So shut up. No, uh, I I give it cauliflower out. No, I'm joking. I'll give it eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Wow. Okay. That's a big rain. Wow, that, that, that's that's something I give like you know heat O of the series, not um, not a tag team. T- I mean I, that's what I give to the Northern Annihilator probably. Spoilers. That's, that's oh no. That's the lower rating you give to the first semi final of series five. Nah, I'd probably give it a nine. I give, it more than eight. I give that yeah, I give that a nine to nine point five. That 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 episode was just 
on point. I mean, really? the, the, I mean, to, to this day, the only heat I'm willing to give a 10 out of 10 for is the first semi-final of um, Series 4. So I love that. Oh, right. That's just me absolutely perfect, apart from the... That was my jam, that was. I mean, apart from the one decision with Dominator 2 and Firestorm, everything else is just... I mean, and then, I mean again, even then, the fight made up for it, even if it was a bit one well, I disagree with, so, but... Yeah. yeah. It's a bloody good fight. Oh, a brilliant fight. Just, yeah. I just wanted to understand how... I mean, from what we saw, how they how they lost, but... Yeah, this, this was obviously the tag team. Next time, I'll say I will be doing Northern Annihilator, finally. I didn't... I, for some reason, I thought this came after the Annihilator. That's why I said we'll be doing that one next. But I will I, be... I, I thought you just changed the um, order of episodes you wanted to do, because I knew the uh, tag team came after the 70 special. I just didn't want to bring it up, because I didn't want to, like, offend you or anything. I wouldn't offend me. It was just more of a, just more of a case I just generally thought that... For some reason, I mixed it up, mixed up the order, because I knew the Warren Pence was last. I just couldn't remember if it was... After this, or after the Southern Annihilator, but it turns out it was after the Southern Annihilator, so yeah, that's fair enough. Obviously, joining me for that one will be Alex and Mike for that one, so that'd be pretty cool. Uh, Sam was originally joining, but he's you know, he's got a very busy schedule, plus, he's working on his uh, two headed death flamingo this weekend, so yeah. um, obviously, you know, I think quite a busy schedule, so obviously, Mike's usually a bit more available, so I thought, you know what, bring him in. It's quite a good, it's, quite, it's my favorite of the specials anyway, the Northern Annihilator, it's the, only, it's the only Annihilator I can think of. I think one one of the few there might be another one I'm forgetting that actually follows the annihilator rules where everything you have you actually have the full amount of round, rounds without someone breaking down and having to quit quit. I I object. <laughs> My favorite episode of Robot Wars ever is also the other annihilator where that rule completely goes. Which one was that one? Again, I'm... the extreme one first annihilator. Oh, that was good as well. Actually, yeah, that, that was, was a, a bloody good episode. episode. That was good. Those two are close. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that one. So I forgot that was the other one that did that. Yeah, those two are very close in my mind. I mean, it's better than the one with the friggin' um, hippopotamus sand pit and the. Yeah. Actually, I quite like that annihilator just because it actually all the robots got wrecked in it. Yeah. Okay, that was like pretty every, fun. It was a massacre. Everyone oh, got gang raped by it. It was brilliant. I loved it. Also, it was, a nightmare got further than panic attack. Yeah, it was also the only time the Disco Inferno managed to show off what it could actually do. So, yeah. you know, or at least to a decent degree. That's, that's a similar theme with Annihilators, is these robots that never really got a chance in the main series actually do really well in the Annihilator. Yeah, you got like Onslaught, you got Spikosaurus, Onslaught, Arnold Spikosaurus, Terminator. Arnold oh, Terminator, Disco, Disco Inferno. Inferno. Yeah, Spirit of Nightmare to an extent. Can open can twice. Can, oh, can open it twice, yes. Yeah, Ripper. Yes. Ripper, yeah. Actually, Ripper did okay in the heat, I guess, but... Yeah, it just got squashed by Firestone. Yeah, pretty much. But... Bursting Gettery? Oh, wait, no. No, 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 no. Chaos... T- oh, no, 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 no. No, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> Hypno... Hi- hi- no, di- hi- no, di- no, no. Okay, no, not Hypnodisc no. either. Um, oh, because Thermidor did well... Four, I'll wait, no. Thermidor did really well in their, in their, in their qualifier. They, they'll do really well... Oh, no, they won't. Never mind. Uh, but, yeah, obviously, you know, Mike and Alex doing the Northern Night there and me. That'll be fun. Spikosaurus actually does something. We actually see Chaos 2 get gang raped by every robot in existence. And Hurt gets this revenge from the that First it World War. It wasn't gang raped. Only two robots attacked it. Man up. Three? No. Two. Didn't Stinger, didn't Stinger really have a go at it as well? Oh, yeah, once after it was already dead. Yeah, hit it hit <laughs> once after it was already dead. I don't think that counts, really. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll, 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 I, are you are you denying Stinger his glory? Yes, yes, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this here before you two start having a verbal fight about Stinger and Chaos too. Because there's worse oh, things. There's, there's worse things that, that, that match all day. There's worse things that Chaos Two has done to Stinger. Uh, but uh, yes. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> grand final. <laughs> yeah, <he's, laughs> grand yeah. final. And that that is the next fight court. Ooh. So uh all that would be good. But uh anyway, uh, I'm uh, Jim Dramatic signing off. No man, it's now one three two, see you later. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> good 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 exit there. <laughs>